Okay, hello and welcome to this uh, literary analysis of The Hound of the Baskervilles, written by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. First, we are going to talk about uh, the contextual framework, uh, about the author, about the masterpiece, and the context. Now we're going to go through the semantic framework, uh, the interpretation of the masterpiece, the, the tone, the themes that are dealt with in the book. And finally, the linguistic framework, what are the different figures of speech that we can find on this book. So, we're going to start. Thank you for watching the video and welcome. Okay, first we're going to look at the contextual framework of The Hound of the Baskervilles. Who was the author? The author was Sir Arthur Ignatius Conan Doyle. He was a British writer and physician. And naturally, he is very famous for for the creation of Sherlock Holmes and his stories. And the, his stories are considered uh, milestones in the field of crime fiction. And he was very famous for for many other uh, writings, including fantasy, science fiction, uh, many plays, poetry, and many non-fiction and historical novels. This book was written during the British Victorian period and this period was uh, pretty important because it, uh, it identifies the reign of Queen Victoria which uh, reign lasted 63 years and 7 months and when the book was written and published uh, the Queen Victoria had just died However, this book and the Conan, many of Conan Doyle's books, or at least the first ones, are considered to be inside the Victorian period, the literary genre. We can label this book in different genres. The first one is mystery, because uh, the main part of the novel, uh, the mystery part of the genre, is who killed Sir Charles Baskerville and who is trying to kill Sir Henry, his heir. Holmes is trying to answer these questions uh, during, during the part of the, during the great part of the novel. These are, they are the plot engines of the novel. And the second part is adventure, the second genre is adventure. And because there is a game uh, of mind, is there a game of wits, uh, let's just say it, between Holmes and Stapleton, who is the mastermind behind the death of Sir Charles and his plan of killing Sir Henry, in order for him to to take over the to take over Baskerville Hall. Okay, who is the masterpiece intended for? Uh, particularly, this this novel has a characteristic that not almost anybody can can read this book, and uh, because we have to take into account that Holmes. And uh, had very interesting or well, kind of outraging habits. For example, using cocaine. In this book, it is not mentioned that fact. Unfortunately, uh, kids can read this book and uh, without fear of being uh, misguided to do something bad. Okay, now let's take a look at the semantic framework of the Hound of Baskerville. Okay, now my personal point of view on the Hound of the Baskerville. Um, it is a very interesting story because it shows many things. For example, the the topic of the friendship between Dr. Watson and Mr. Holmes, and the that uh, kind of um, belief uh, belief related to to supernatural beings, as in the case of the Hound. And it shows that uh, with a kind of malice, you can uh, create a story, an, an evil story, uh, around something or around someone, and you can exploit it. Uh, as it was the case of Mr. Stapleton, who was the, the responsible for Sir Charles' death and for wanting the death of um, Sir Henry as well. Okay, now uh, the tone of the story. Um, we can see that the writer of the story is Dr. Watson. Uh, his tone of narration is, is very good, it's very detailed, and he puts a lot of emotion and effort to, 
try the story as best as he can in order for the reader to get a good comprehension of the environment, uh, of the place and the events that surround, that surround him. Okay, some of the things that we can see on the book are, for example, the friendship, obviously, uh, with, uh, between Mr. Holmes and Dr. Watson, um, the contrasting regions, for example, uh, London and the Moors, because London is the city, is it's light, but the Moors are something dark, and everything is far, and it's really dark, really kind of scary or and intimidating. Another thing is the top, the guilt and blame. Because, for example, uh, Mr. Stapleton, who is the, res the responsible for the death of Sir Charles, he doesn't feel guilt. He's guilty, but he doesn't feel guilt. And Mr. Holmes and Watson, when they discovered this, this dead person uh, on the moon that they think is uh, Sir Henry, they feel, they feel the blame, they feel guilty for having left him alone. Okay, and now we're going to take a look at the linguistic framework of the Hound, the Buster Blues. In order for us to take a look at the, at the figures of speech found on the book, we're going to use a, an ebook found on planetebook.com. The first uh, figure of, of speech that we can find on the Hound of the Buster Blues is Lightwitches. Uh, this rhetorical device is used or is present uh, in something when something is affirmed by stating the negative of its opposite. Uh, for example, on page two we can we can see the the sentence "Save upon those not infrequent occasions when he stayed up all night." That was on page two, and in page ninety one. We can see another light to this that is, is that as follows. His grey clothes and jerky zigzag irregular progress make him not unlike some huge moss himself. Uh, now there is a repetition, uh, the repetition of a word of words within a line or a sequence or clauses. Uh, in page 35, the one is whether any crime has been committed at, at all. The second is what is the crime and how was it committed? We can see uh, two words that are being uh, repeated in the same, uh, almost in the same sentence. Uh, we can see as well a uh, polyptotron, the repetition of a word with its successive clauses or sentences in a different form but from the same root. And page 35. I find that a concentrated atmosphere helps a concentration of thought. We can see con concentrate, concentration. And now we can see a sigma. It is a construction in which a word governs two or more other words, but has a different meaning when applies to each of the words. It says, all afternoon and late into the evening, he is lost in tobacco and thought. We can see that in page 62. There is an imperfection as well, that this, the inversion of the natural or usual word order. Uh, there are this there is one a hound it was the, it, it is found on pages 127 and 201 uh, there is as well an epanalepsis that is the repetition at the end of a clause of the word of words uh, that occurred at the beginning of the clause uh, for example page 135 I didn't think you would have taken advantage of it Sir Henry indeed I didn't I didn't I didn't uh, there is a parison as well. Uh, the parison is a type of parallel construction. That is a type, uh, for example, in page 139. Uh, the face in the cab, the figure against the moon. We can see article, noun, preposition, article, noun. Uh, in the same pattern. The face in the cab, the figure against the moon. And uh, there is an essay column. And it's a column, and that is a parallelism not only of a structure but of length. The same number of the syllables in the parallel phrases. 
is a partisan but more intense. For example, page 161. I thought of the I thought of the heavy rains and looked at the gaping roof. We can see that are the same the same pattern and the same number of syllables. And we can see as well an episodesis that is a repetition of a word of word for emphasis with no words intervening in the page 124. A beard, a beard, the man has a beard. And there is a symbol that when you compare two things with uh, the word like or as. For example, 186, page 186. He will be fluttering in your net as helpless as one of his own butterflies. And uh, there is a metaphor, uh, the, uh, a word or phrase ordinarily designates one thing that is used to designate another, thus making a comparison. Page 193. You have been walking for some months very near to the edge of a precipice. And uh, finally, a, a personification, that is, in which animate, in inanimate objects or statues are endowed with human qualities or abilities. In page 71, for example, old gabled houses peeped out from amid the thick green foliage. And page 199, the fog webs came crawling round both corners of the house. We can see the personification of those things. Who is the British citizen according to the author, or according to Conan Doyle? Well, as far as I know, uh, this citizen is a person who is responsible with himself, responsible with the others, and is a person is a person prone to help others, as we can see with uh, Charles Baskerville and Dr. Mr. Stapleton when they help Mrs. Laura Lyon, as well as we see with uh, Dr. Watson uh, and Mr. Holmes on um, helping Sir Henry to to helping him with this this problem of the hound. Okay, so that will be it for now uh, for this um, analysis of the hound of the Baskervilles. Um, that is a very, uh, it's an interesting book indeed, and I recommend it for uh, to anyone who likes Sherlock Holmes or likes mysteries or likes a, or simply likes a want to have a good reading. If you are interested in, in investigate further about this book, you can you can make about the friendship of Holmes and Watson, about the myths that the superstitions uh, created that are something or someone, perhaps about the the evil of mind, for example, uh, in the case of Mr. Stapleton. Thank you very much for watching this video and goodbye.